We'll start. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining us here today. Um, we have a, a, a great participation. I'm very glad to see um, so many familiar faces. Uh, I see also some new faces. So I think we will have an interesting discussion this morning. Um, I want to thank uh, Minister Usati for joining us here today. Um, this is a demonstration of the importance that the authorities uh, assign to development and improvement of the business environment in Moldova. Uh, we have enjoyed uh, um, a, a great partnership and collaboration on these issues uh, over many years now. and. Uh, uh, since I joined uh, and, and moved to Moldova in 2017, for sure one of the biggest highlights was uh, the joint work that we have been doing on improvement of business environment, on uh, uh, permit licensing reform, development of, of one-stop shop. And, uh, and I'm surrounded here with people who have contributed uh, a lot to, to this, this process. Um, so um, I will not make a, a, a long introduction because I think there is a big suspense. It's an annual event and we always are waiting for uh, the results of the, the survey. Uh, uh, so I, I just want to say that this has been for, we have been doing this survey for 15 years uh, now. So it, it, it's a long, uh, uh, long process. Uh, most importantly, what it allows us to do is to uh, be proud uh, of uh, where we started and where we are coming. Where we, and we, we often have a tendency to compare the situation with uh, what happened last month or what happened last year. But I think this cost of doing business survey, it allows us to look at the perspective of how Moldova developed uh, on, the, uh, on the business environment issues, where we started, where we are now. What is also very important is that uh, it allows to, um, to really uh, get a pulse of businesses in terms of uh, how they perceive the business environment. Uh, it, it gives us an opportunity to uh, assess whether or not the reforms that we are supporting and introducing are really working. Do they translate into change uh, for businesses? Do they translate into uh, better, better environment for them to do business? And, 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 and we are happy to uh, report, and my colleagues uh, will, will go through, through, through detailed presentation later today, that indeed the survey confirms that real reforms work and real reforms do translate into benefits for uh, that businesses actually uh, um, uh, feel on, on, on their day-to-day -day work. It also gives us uh, a good sense of the areas where we need to do much more work going forward. There are still areas that either haven't reformed uh, enough or uh, still need uh, our attention. Um, uh, so we we really hope that we will collaborate um, across everybody who is present here with the leadership of the uh, Ministry of Economy in, in this particular case, that, that the government will continue to make uh, this uh, information available to the public and encourage the, uh, the, 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 the reality check that we will be having on, 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 on where we stand with the improvement of business environment. Um, uh, I have the uh, World Bank team, Tariq, uh, here. He, he's the, the leading this effort from our side. We have um, Galina in the room. This, the, 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 there are many people behind it. We are benefiting also from the presence of, uh, of uh, Mario, um, uh, who is the practice uh, manager uh, that, that leads the private sector uh, development and financial sector development issues for the region. Uh, before passing uh, a word to them, I will ask uh, Minister Rusati to make an introductory uh, welcome remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anna, for your kind words and for your kind invitation for this very pleasant event. Estimate uh, Donna Director, Honorata Assistenza, Domnilor, Shadomnilor, 
Mă menționat, am deosebită plăcere și onoare și vă salut astăzi la evenimentul privind prezentarea rezultatelor studiului costuri reglementării de stat a activităților întreprinderilor, la care participă parteneri de dezvoltare, reprezentație în mediul de afaceri. Vedeți că e un eveniment destul de interesant și număr de participanților este foarte mare, ce se ne bucură și pe noi, dar și organelor de stat a Republicii Moldova. Evenimentul de azi constituie o platformă excelentă și unică pentru a trece în revistă, în primul rând, realizările Guvernului, pentru crearea unui climat de afaceri favorabil, eficient, prietenos, pe de o parte, și la fel de a creiona probleme și obstacole percepute de business de către dumneavoastră la interacțiune cu autoritățile de drept de reglementare, pe de altă parte. Facem un rezumat ce s-a îndeplinit în perioada precedentă și facem un plan de lucru, dacă doriți, pentru perioada uh, următoare. Este de remarcat, cum a fost menționat și anterior, că acest studiu are un istoric, fiind efectuat în Republica Moldova de mai mult de 15 ani, monitorizând 18 domenii de intervenție pentru partea statului în activitatea agențelor economici și care implică anumite costuri de conformitate pentru întreprinderi reprezentând acest studiu, reprezintă în primul rând percepția dumneavoastră, percepția managementelor companiei asupra evoluției indicatorilor. După cum cunoașteți, asigurarea condițiilor optime pentru dezvoltarea afacerilor și creșterea încrederii business-ului față de organele de stat este una dintre prioritățile principale care este pe agenda guvernului. Obiectivele și acțiunile implementate se conțin și în strategiei națională de dezvoltare Moldova 2020, strategiei reformei cadrului de reglementare a activităților de întreprinzător pentru anii 2013-2020 și la fel în alte documente de politici aprobate de guvern și în plan de acțiune a ministerului pe care au mânoarea să, să-l administrez. După prezentarea rezultatelor ultimului ultimul studiu, acum un an în urmă, guvernul a promovat un șir de reforme, necesitate care au fost dictate inclusiv și de studiu respectiv, în care au fost axate și acțiunile acestea au fost axate pe îmbunătățirea mediului de afaceri. Cu nerăbdare așteptăm prezentarea acestui raport, deoarece din informația prezentată preliminar, inclusiv în conlucrare cu consultații, echipa consultanților, Mulțumiri separate echipei care au participat la elaborarea acestui studiu. Mulțumiri separate mediul de afaceri. Mersi mult că dumneavoastră ați participat activ, că feedback-ul din partea dumneavoastră și percepția dumneavoastră față de acti- activitățile și acțiunile a guvernului este una absolut necesară pentru a planifica corect toate acțiunile noastre în îmbunătățirea climatului de afaceri. Vă mulțumesc încă o dată, Ana, pentru că ne-ați invitat la această conferință foarte importantă și cu nerăbdare așteptăm prezentarea acestui studiu. Vă urez o zi foarte bună, productivă și așteptăm comentarii, sugestii, propuneri din partea dumneavoastră, deoarece încă o dată, asta nu pur și simplu un raport static, cum a fost menționat, așa un snapshot, este un raport în dinamic și care arată nu numai rezultatele obținute pe parcursul perioadei precedente, dar pentru noi este foarte important care mai sunt obstacole, cele mai uh, strușnice menționate de către dumneavoastră. Vă mulțumesc încă o dată pentru invitație. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, uh, welcoming remarks. Uh, I think, you know, um, uh, we, uh, you mentioned that last uh, year, uh, or in 2018, the results of the survey were not too encouraging on some fronts and, and that there were certain actions that were taken. And, and, and we're happy to see that uh, they are paying off. Uh, and, and we will look at the details. But for it's interesting that uh, inspection reform, uh, uh, permissive acts reforms, licenses, digital one-stop shop, these are areas where the World Bank has been supporting uh, uh, the authorities. And what we see is that that we already see the businesses realizing the, uh, the, the actual savings in terms of the uh, uh amount uh, amounts they need to spend on on obtaining all those uh, permits uh, they estimate it we use our methodology to estimate the savings and, and it's approximate it's more than 17 million annually already that we can uh, account for i Perfect. hope that it, it's even more um, and and so um uh so so i i think uh, without uh, going uh, into further details i will ask maybe mario uh mario uh, guadamias to give us also a couple of uh, welcoming remarks thank you mario 
Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I want to be brief because I know there is a lot of expectation about the results. So, but uh, now I've been, as uh, Anna mentioned, uh, working uh, more than uh, two years ago on private sector issues in the region as a whole. And I think that uh, this uh, event and the participation in this event uh, shows uh, how important. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here uh, in order to understand from the survey of this year what are the results. I think it's very good that uh, there is a 15-year perspective. So especially from the reform point of view, this gives a clear uh, um, uh, idea of the results and how these uh, um, uh, reforms normally need to take time to pay off and uh, so one sh should not focus only on one year results but uh, over time as the Anna and the Minister said. I think that's why then it's important that Tariq and the team will present what has been the achievements uh, so far but also it's important to use this event uh, to think what are the reforms going forward as well. And I've been looking into different countries and so on, so I see how important it is to have this medium-term perspective. What, with that, yeah, let me just uh, turn the, to the team. I'm really happy to be here. This is very important. And the big audience uh, in this room uh, demonstrate how important this is for, for Moldova. So uh, thank you again for, for inviting me, Anna Minister. And let me pass the floor to my colleague, Tariq. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks. Um, I apologize, I will have to speak in English, but uh, we will have a translation. So, um, as His Excellency Minister said, this survey has been done for the past um, 15 years. And what is also important is to not just look year to year, but look at the entire trend, what happened. Um, I'm actually pleased to say that this year, we do see significant improvement in terms of um, business environment in the country. Um, last year was, or 2018, was not very good. Uh, we saw a huge jump in um, the time the businesses needed to deal with the bureaucracy, the time that the businesses needed to comply with regulations, which was a very negative trend. Uh, but the reforms that, that were taken and that were started to be implemented last year did pay off. And you can see that the, this indicator is basically the percentage of time that the management spends in dealing with regulation, administrative procedures, compliance costs with the government. Um, so it's very good. And we can see it's in a lower um, numbers as you know, almost close to the lowest that that was in 2016. So this is very good, um, which means that reforms are paying off. So let me show you where the big improvements were made, but also what are some of the areas where there is still more work to be done. So this is the area where big reforms were made and big improvement. Um, if you look at the, the graph in 2016, why it's so low, it's when moratorium was there. So technically, during that time, there should be zeros. But even still, during the moratorium, there were still inspections. Um, and then, like in every country, after moratorium, the numbers go up. But what we see in 2019, that the numbers start going down. That there is reduced number of inspections per business. There is a reduced burden per business. Um, the businesses feel um, less pressure from inspections. 40% uh, of businesses said that they've actually experienced less inspections, which is implementation of the risk-based inspections. So it's actually showing um, results. And to me, there are two key things that are coming out of this slide. One is that the businesses are basically seeing improvement in inspections, which is kind of like their improvement of public sector image. They don't see the public sector as burdening them as they did before, which is a huge perception improvement um, and a very positive trend, which should be continued. So the risk-based inspections do pay off. Um, we also see another thing, the second point is the companies are paying um, significantly less bribes 
and they are paying more fines, which is normal. Before, they would solve the issues by just speed payments. Um, now the compliance is there, so there are not the bribes are down. But of course, then you know some companies are not in compliance, so uh, the, the the formal official fines are going up, which is a very normal trend in the countries that did inspection reform, and where inspections are functioning properly. Um, so I think what will be important to monitor going forward is, um, you know to continue with the risk-based inspections and further inspection reform. But this is a very positive sign. Um, and this saved a lot of money for businesses. I th we estimated more than $5 million per annum were savings for businesses based on this reform. Um, another significant improvement um, is in trade not notification. A lot of you might remember this was trade authorization. It takes few weeks to finish the process. Now it takes, um, you will spend three hours and you will get things done in less than three days. That's significant, you know, if you say a few weeks to a few days. Um, and what is important is more than a half of interviewed companies said, we see improvement in this indicator. This is the first time they are saying that they see big improvement in this um, uh, uh, indicator, and this is also a result of implementation of the MMIP, the one-stop shop for digital permits. Um, what, uh, what is one of the things that we can see here, what, what we need to pay attention going forward is that this implementation is not fully implemented in all the cities and municipalities in the country. Um, one third of the companies, like 30% of the businesses, uh, still complain that some of the local authorities are asking additional rate, you know, documents beyond the law. Before, this was more than 50%. Now it went down to 30%, which is good. But it means we have this implementation gap on the local level where not every local authority is respecting the law. If they would respect the law, you know, every now company would have these numbers. So I think what is important is to continue implementation of the one-stop shop, digital one-stop shop on the local level so that every business will feel the benefit. And let me just give some numbers. In last year, more than 25,000 businesses um, felt impact of this reform. That's a big number. Um, so we are just saying continue with this reform because it does have impact. Um, the next one is um, one of my favorites, is licensing and permits. It's also linked to the one-stop shop and digital um, permits. Uh, last year, 2019, was the first year of the full implementation of the one-stop shop. Um, and uh, you see the significant drop in like more than 30% of the time needed to get the license and permit. Um, and this was, if you look at in early years, this was, you know, 30 to 60 days before. Now we are talking about eight days. Um, if we look at the statistics from the one-stop shop system, MMIP, their system shows the average of seven days to issue the license. The survey says eight. So this is really the very similar uh, number which shows that the survey, sh you know, reflects the reality. Um, what is also important is it takes 20% of time less to prepare documents to apply and companies are paying 20% less in bribes simply by the, the system. So it means that they keep 20% more money for themselves, um, which is very important. Um, sanitary certification is, is another example of reform implemented reform that now takes literally, um, you know, two and a half hours and, you know, with less than three days. So think of the trade notification. It was three hours, less than three days. This is also something like three hours, less than three days. So it gives you the perspective that these things can be done very quickly. 
This should not be the problem. Notification, certification should really be done quickly um, if we want to move to more export-oriented economy. But this is also the result of the reform well done. Um, however, there are things that should be improved going forward. Um, if you look at sanitary authorization, um, you can see that despite the amendments of the law on internal trade, huge number of companies, 38%, um, still get sanitary authorization, which is, uh, for us, we think it's too much given the law, it should be significantly less. Um, which means that there is some gap in implementation. Maybe some authorities are still requiring or asking for some documentation and compliance. Um, you see here that um, less than you know, 20 percent of companies see improvement in this indicator. Um, think about the trade notifications, where there were more than half of them saying this was really improved. Here you say less than 20 percent are saying this is improved. Um, and the numbers are not, you know, um, someone can say, well, you know, it takes six days, seven days to get it. It's not long. It's not. But if you look at notifications, um, certifications, it takes three hours and three days. Authorization is not the permit and license. For permits and licenses, it takes seven days. So why would it take for this seven days? Um, so this is an area where the more we can digitize this procedure, the more this procedure can be fully digitized in the system, we will see improvement. Um, this is the area where there were no visible improvements, according to the respondents, on construction permits. And, uh, you know, almost half of the companies are saying that they had a problem, experienced some problems in getting the construction permits. This is probably one of the indicators that would require serious attention. Um, and if you look at this, you know, I think there is a trend emerging that, you know, a lot of these with the trade notification, with other non notifications, with the construction permit, a lot of this work is linked to the local level. And how the local level differently interprets the laws and regulations implemented on a national level. So, again, the more we can digitize the permit, put it in the system, uh, make it more transparent, situation will significantly improve. Um, and this is delaying a lot of projects and activities if you need to get a um, uh, long time to get the permit. Um, if you look at the doing business report that the World Bank is doing, construction permits in the indicator where Moldova ranks the worst. I think it's 153rd out of 190 countries. In all the other indicators, Moldova is, I think, below 80. This one is 153. Um, so definitely cause for concern and, and call for actions. Um, phytosanitary certificates, the, the graph looks more radical than it is. You know, it's still increase in 0.2 days. Um, but for example, this is very, um, uh, this is a good example of, of how, for example, we can link inspection reform with permits and, and, and you know, permits reform. Because to get this um, certificate, inspector needs to go in a field. And think about it, if you know, he or she needs to go in a field, collects, you know, do, come back, and then input in the system, that takes two days. If we can more digitize inspections, if they can do this in the field, then we can cut the time in half. So this is show you how we can link the inspections registry inspections work database with one-stop shop to speed up the process. Um, another area where businesses feel a problem is with the tax administration, tax service. Um, situation did not improve. Um, longer inspections, um, they stay longer. So the inspections that stay longer in the businesses, there are more inspections in the businesses and the companies paying fines increased. Um, if I was to speculate, again, as a personal opinion, to me it would seem that the tax inspector was staying there until they find some problems to get companies to pay. Um, 
it's symptomatic in a lot of other countries that I've seen. Um, so this can be speculation, but this is a cause for concern. Something, you know, the, the trend is reversing and is going in a negative direction, and the companies are feeling a problem. Um, Moldova, we want to be competitive. We want to be export competitive. We want to be able to get inputs. We want to be able to trade. Um, this is still very complex. Companies are still complaining about this. Um, and, you know, almost 30% are, in, you know, having difficulties, which shouldn't be. We should make it simple. And Moldova is one of the, which is, this is really um, interesting. Moldova is, I think, is one of the very few countries that authorized um, economic operators, like I think 100 and something economic operators are authorized to do in-house customs and clearances, which in other countries, you know, it's like 5, 10, 15, 20. So significantly less. But beyond that, businesses are still feeling a problem. Um, and if we look at this slide, um, it has to do with um, customs, clearances, tariffs, the arbitrary, you know, um, prices on goods and, and tariffs for procedures and customs procedures. Um, and of course, look, this is the perception survey. This is not, you know, like clear science, but this is what businesses are saying. They're experiencing the problems in these things. So maybe this is a cause for a review. Maybe this is a cause for some action in this respect. Um, because they are saying we are not feeling the imp improvements. Um, you know, and then, um, so let me then show you another slide that will illustrate what am I saying. Um, if you look at the bottom part, um, especially, this is inspections, right? This is on inspections. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, all three indicators are significantly going down, all of them. So businesses are feeling improvement in inspections, that inspectors are not there to, get, to take bribes. Um, they are not there to favor competitors. So I'm just showing you this, that different slides correlate and say that there is an improvement. Think about the previous slide on, on customs and procedures. Businesses are saying, we have a problem. Import procedures are a problem. And then you see the slide on customs. So what am I trying to say here is when reform is done properly, then you see the impact on several angles. Um, what is very worrisome here is that it's this one, um, where businesses are saying that the law is not implemented equally. It's almost half of people, and it's getting worse, um, which means that there is a regulatory implementation gap. There is selectivism in implementation. So rule of law is not respected. Um, this is really worrisome. Uh, the more we want to get foreign investors, the more we want to get competitive, this needs to improve. Um, the next few slides uh, will talk about some of the issues where uh, companies don't go to courts because they think it takes too long, which means they don't trust in rule of law and this will be done quickly. Um, and then, um, you know, there is more and more companies trying to settle disputes in unofficial methods. One third doesn't seem much, and it decreased. But why should be any case to resolve in unofficial methods if the formal system is working properly? Um, it's also clear from the analysis that um, uh, less companies had kind of business disputes there are still a high number, like 68%, but it's 5% less than the previous year, um, which means that there are less disputes, but even with those disputes, businesses are not going through the courts or uh, arbitration or similar methods that are going with unofficial me methods, uh, which is not good on the long term. Um, then business registration, although still seem to be simple, 25% people still say that they experience problems, um, which really should, you know, maybe there is a, a, a scope to do, you know, 
once you know maybe it's a school for digital online fully implemented business registration reform where you can do everything in in, in a matter of hours um, I don't know I'm just saying you know people would expect based on doing business ra ranking that this is not an issue but 25 percent is still a high number um, very few people very few companies experience problem with the product certification which is good um, and there are no bribes involved in a way very very minimal number so it means that this is really functioning well product certification is really functioning well um, and then companies are saying that um, less companies have accountants on payroll uh, and there are some simplified accounting procedures in place um, another issue is uh, there is a decrease in number of uh, companies selling at regulated prices um, there is an increase in number of companies that deal with the public procurement contracts. It's a significant increase, so it means that more companies are dealing with the public procurement contracts. Um, and then 57% is a direct quote of those, and 29% is a public tender. Another big issue is skills. Um, 25% of companies, one in four, experience problems with the skill shortages, um, which is constant. Over the past several years, this remains the same. So this is an uh, acute problem that should be tackled. Um, this is a slide that actually shows that reforms should be made because um, even the business perception now is saying that they see no improvement in rule of law, personal shortage, tax system, and that you know the businesses, um, in a way, are saying that situation is not getting better. You know than it was before in these things. Um, however, they are very optimistic compared to the like, for example, 2018. They are more optimistic that situation will get better. But I think to meet this demand of the private sector, the reform should, should continue. Um, let me wrap up with this slide. Um, so the cost of doing business is a survey that we, um, together with the Ministry of Economy, we do every year. It's implemented, the surveys are done in November and December each year with more than 600 companies throughout the country. At the same time, the World Bank um, implemented another survey, Enterprise Survey, which was also done last year on a different set of companies, um, 320, I think, companies um, were interviewed. And the two surveys done on two different samples in Moldova came up with these um, kind of obstacles for the private sector. Um, I'm sure you will see the similarities between the obstacles. Um, and okay, of course, there are different ranking. In enterprise survey, skills comes as a top obstacle for the businesses. Then um, political instability, then the taxes, tax administration, then red tape, informality, regulatory procedures, and then the rule of law. In the cost of doing business, it's just reverse. But they are pretty much the same. So almost 1,000 companies last year said, these are the problems. So maybe, you know, I think it's very good that the government did reforms and continue to doing reforms because they do pay off. You do see improvement. The businesses did see improvements they, they improve the perception of the public sector. They see public sector less predatory and more business friendly, but more reforms are needed. So the World Bank Group stands ready to help. Uh, we've partnered with the ministry and the government for many years now to improve these things. And some reforms are paying off um, and we stand ready to help. Thank you.
thank you very much, Tariq. Um, I want to ask uh, Minister Usad if he wants to reflect very briefly on. So, Tariq, first of all, thank you very much for your kind presentation. Tariq and Limorumena, like it's possible to interact, actually. Suntem foarte, foarte bucuroși că multe lucruri dumneavoastră le apreciați că guvernul se mișcă pentru în mai multe direcții, în direcția potrivită. Și rezultatele care noi avem, în, care au fost prezentate în numai ce, confirmă încă o dată acest lucru. Unele din lucruri care sunt încă stau pe, spunem așa, încă în culoarea roșie, în primul rând, dacă vorbim despre autorizații în construcție și actele permisive în construcție, într-adevăr, cum a fost menționat și de către prezentator, inclusiv și în ratingul Bench Mondial Doing Business, suntem, suntem foarte prost, necătând la fapt că am trecut să ratingul nostru a fost îmbunătățit cu șapte locuri. Și aici și este problema numărul unu la care v-ați referit și vreau să confirm încă o dată. Dintr-o parte, la studierea legislației care privede un număr de zile uh, foarte concret, stabilit, maxim, pentru a obține fiecare din act permisiv ce ține de autorizație în construcție, toate actele permisive în construcție, este unul, dar Documentele suplimentare solicitate de către administrația publică locală nu coincid și în multe cazuri care contrazic legii, necât la fapt că cunoașteți legea cu privire la autorizație în construcție, construcție expres privede actele care trebuie să fie prezentate, la solicitarea emiterii certificatului de urbanism sau autorizație de construire și expres stipulat că alte acte nu pot fi solicitate, necât la acest fapt în mai multe Exerciții care noi am făcut împreună cu Consiliul Economic pe lângă prim-ministru și în Corpul de Control pe lângă prim-ministru, au vințat fapt, fapt chiar și în, aici, în partea centrală a țării, formal în unele administrații publice locale, este prezentată lista actelor care nu coincid sau mai mult, să spun, contrazic legii. Aici vedem o ieșire. Ca și în alte locuri unde au fost, noi am atins niște îmbunătățiri semnificative. Și acest lucru să fie inclus în SGA registru, în ghișeu unic, să facem în modul electronic. Noi am discutat de mai multe ori, inclusiv cu partenerii, partenerii noștri de dezvoltare. Cunoaștem că la moment una din probleme tehnice pentru introducerea acestor documentelor în sisteme, deoarece proiect tehnic poate fi destul de voluminos, scanare, necesită un efort suplimentar, dar este un lucru foarte interesant. În ultimii ani, în ultimii decenii, proiecte tehnice sunt elaborate în versiune electronică. Avem semnături electronice, avem semnături electronice la personal implicat în verificarea, expertizarea proiectelor, în emiterea documentației de licitație, dar se depărește un proiect care a fost elaborat în versiune electronică, se depărește pe hârtie, se aplică ștampilă umedă și după asta, să fie normal procesat prin sistemele electronice, trebuie din nou digitalizat prin scanare. Cam vedem aici o ruptură evidentă. Mai mult ca atât. Noi am discutat pe prelabil cu colegi. Este un sistem, dacă aici noi facem îmbunătățire semnificativă, atunci rating-ul total Republicii Moldova în doing business tot crește semnificativ. Dar nu numai rating Noi nu ne oprim numai la rating -uri. Înțelegeți? Aici noi putem să controlăm mai multe lucruri. Lucruri ce am de verificare proiectelor, cunoaștem că sunt foarte multe plângeri cum să fac aceste verificări și uneori poate fi un proiect de 100 de milioane care se verifică în două zile. Nu este posibil din punct de vedere tehnic, vă asigur acest lucru. Supravigherea de autor și multe, multe alte cazuri, faze determinate a proiectului. Aici vedeți prin introducerea acestei aceste proceduri în sistemul ghișeului unic, nu prinde mai multe întrebări, și calitate în construcție, și transparență decizională, transparență în tot ce ține de construcție. Și aici, să nu conc, noi suntem pe locul 170, nu sunt minte cifra reală, aici noi venim cu solicitare și către parteneri de dezvoltare de a ne asista în acest lucru, de a îmbunătăți acest rating, prin măsuri foarte concrete și măsuri care noi trebuie să repetăm, măsuri care noi deja au dat dovezi foarte bune în alte domenii. Prin digitalizarea proceselor, prin includerea în sistemul SGAP, înțeleg că sunt deja, s-au început lucru, cel puțin cu primăriei Chișinău, pentru a digitaliza acest proces, tot ce ține cu de acest lucru. Certificate fitosanitare, 
Știm și aici sunt întrebări, trebuie de verificat cum, dar trebuie să analizăm cu toți împreună, deoarece certificate sunt foarte importante pentru a avea posibilitatea de a exporta această producție în Uniunea Europeană, ca exemplu, și în alte țări la fel. Și aici să vedem dacă această certificare la distanță, fără vizitarea a șantierului sau terenului sau câmpului, este posibilă. Noi cunoaștem că în multe, în multe țări au trecut deja la alte metode, prin drone, prin metode de, de la distanță. Depinde de cost. Cost și timp, aici tot noi trebuie să analizăm foarte, foarte minuțios. Dintr-o parte și sistemul să fie, sistemul, sistemul să fie rapid și ieftin, dar de altă parte să nu riscăm, să pierdem acreditarea acestor certificate, să nu cumva să punem sub risc posibilitatea de a exporta producția agricolă. Asta a fost o reacție așa imediată. Număr de controle, zicea, dumneavoastră ați utilizat ghișeul unic, dumneavoastră ați menționat, nu cred că putem să adăugăm ceva. Unică că trebuie să creștem gradul de utilizare acestui sistem. Sistemul deja e pus de pe rol. Noi vedem că din an în an este creșterea deja aplicațiilor care se fac digital, care se fac prin intermediul rețelor, prin, prin internet. Sperăm că acest gradul trebuie să fie, poate să fie și trebuie să fie crescut. Atunci, mă, încă multe probleme, nu deja o să o să lăsăm în trecut. Să nu cumva monopolizez microfonul, asta era o reacție așa imediată și la cele mai importante, cele mai importante lucruri care eu le-am văzut din raport. Vă mulțumesc. Thank you very much. I wanted uh, maybe to open up the floor for uh, questions at this point in time or uh, or some observations and comments. Start with Marianne. 